this is I am Spoon. Uh, today I'm bringing you a special game of brass uh, as usual and uh, the, the specialty here is that we are uh, going to show a game that was played on the parlor. Uh, the parlor works slightly differently than tabletop simulator because the turns are played in asynchronous fashion. So you won't see live here the players doing the moves uh, but you will rather see screenshots that I've made uh, turn by turn uh, across the last uh, two weeks or so as this, this game was played over a period of one two weeks and uh, I'll be commenting on it it's a very interesting game with very good players uh, against whom I've played already many times in the past and um, this is kind of a very special game and uh, we'll quickly see why um, so first thing first when we start the game we'll look first at uh, the, the merchant setup and our cards and uh, immediately a couple of interesting points here we have cotton in Nottingham we have cotton in Oxford, this is a type of uh, setup that really favors uh, going for cotton. Uh, three points is, is, is very good and, and kind of easy to get here. Um, and uh, the one in Oxford is also quite valuable because the brick players will typically be playing around Birmingham to get their iron out. And so they will basically build all the connections for you if you go cotton and then you can just uh, build your cotton in this slot. Um, so it's, it's a quite a, a good setup um, to, to play cotton. Depends, of course, a bit on your cards, but um, yeah. And we see that the first player, blue here, uh, started by developing uh, cotton immediately as first action on uh, turn one. Um, maybe a couple of words on my cards. It's kind of a mixed bag of things. Um, uh, we see Colebrookdale, Stafford, and Burton and Trent. These are, are good to, to, to build beer, actually. Uh, Colebrookdale in, in Canal, I don't really advise to build a canal here and then build iron or something here because it makes it too easy for other players to uh, also profit from the links you've built so i would rather use it as a as a beer slot um, for the rest it's, it's nothing really exceptional um, yeah mixed mix, mix kind of cards from my side um, so now we move to turn two and immediately it jumps a couple of uh, actions ahead you don't see live here what the people were doing uh, but from my side i um I developed on the first turn as well i took a loan and, and developed again so i developed twice and uh, um, at the price of uh, six coins, basically. And uh, ahead of me, um, I'd say the, the play from the others was fairly standard. Uh, purple here went for a loan and then built his first iron. Uh, orange developed his beer away, a coal mine, and a level one crates. This is a typical break play where your goal is to get two level two crates out, two beers, and then typically two or three iron uh, out. Um, so very standard. Uh, this is probably the same strategy that uh, purple will do here, but purple is kind of doing it in a slightly different order. And um, then we see that blue developed away two cottons in the first turn, and I'm doing the same. I'm developing uh, cotton um, away. Um, so immediately it starts kind of with two players going cotton. And now you have to know this is what is really special about this game. Two players going cotton is kind of frowned, up, uh, frowned upon on... on uh, at high level, because most people at high level think two, two players going cotton uh, basically ruins the game for balls. They, they, won't, they will not be able to win. Uh, the, the issue if two players go cottons is that in a typical cotton build, you're, you're quite reliant on the merchant gear. You would build uh, three level three crates, uh, three, three level three um, cottons, I mean, and you would sell them using this merchant beer and then this merchant beer, and then uh, either someone else beer or maybe a beer you've built yourself. Or sometimes you would only build two level um, three beers and, and loan up some extra or something. So there, there are different ways of playing it, but in all the ways you play it, you, you kind of rely on this. And then same in the second age where you, you would be looking forward to consume these merchant beers. And uh, in a typical game with only one player going cotton, these are kind of reserved for you. No one else will, will touch these. But with two players going cotton, you're fighting for the same beers, which can make the game very messy. Uh, but that's not all, you're also fighting for the same slots. Uh, typically the, the Birmingham slot here, there's only one cotton that can be played here. Uh, and uh, who's gonna get it? It's kind of very important. So um, this is why it's kind of frowned upon on high level play. And it goes more, it goes further than that. It also goes that if two players go cotton, it means only two players will go uh, like a beer and iron strategy, like a brick strategy. And uh, this means these two players going brick will have basically more space to to build beer, to build iron. They will have less competition, basically. And uh, for example, when in a more typical game, it would be fairly hard to get your level uh, four beer out unless you overbuild one of your own beers. 
uh, because there's just not enough slots and everyone is building beer. But in a game where uh, no one is building beer or, or a little more, uh, fewer people are building beer, it will be easier for the brick players to get all their beer out and, and, and thus kind of win the game. So that's why typically you will, at high level, never see really two players going cotton, because quite frankly, it just kind of ruins the game for both. And uh, this is a very interesting game because I'm going to show you that uh, this common uh, opinion or this common conception, in my view, is not always correct. And uh, I'll kind of try to prove with this game that two players going cotton is maybe not as absurd as, as looks. Um, so we will see how it plays out. Um, so yeah, this is still the very beginning. I say nothing uh, special here. Uh, we're moving here to turn three. Um, we see that uh, Orange, in the meantime, had already done his develops in the previous turns. Now builds towards Derby and Iron, quite standard. Very good for us, the cotton plays, of course, because we want to build cotton here to sell to this. Um, uh, from my side, I basically immediately uh, scout. I actually don't have very good cards for uh, for beer, but uh, uh, so sorry for cotton play. But I think most builds in Canal can kind of incorporate the scout. Um, yeah, th this kind of avoids building too many canals yourself, too many links yourself, and uh, this is quite essential to a good canal era. You don't want to be building links. They're not that valuable point-wise. They don't really set you up for next stage, and often you end up ending, uh, you end up uh, helping the other players. So uh, from my side, um, um, I, I did a scout, and uh, and I think I developed further afterwards. I guess that's my next action going to be this turn gonna be scouting. Uh, we see in the meantime also that the blue player uh, yeah, didn't back down or something, just continues developing cotton and then going into that direction. So both of us are, are basically at minus three income, bleeding money every turn. Ideally you offset the loan fairly quickly, but you want to offset it the right way. Uh, typically you would offset it with a level two call um, as, a, as a cotton player in most standard setups, but it's also possible to do it differently. Um, so we continue the game, and, and this is sorry, this is a screenshot taken from my smartphone instead of my computer. It looks a bit different, uh, but um, here you see uh, what happens. Uh, from, from my side here, um, I was lost here in player order. Uh, I end up taking an extra loan, going to minus six income, and then uh, building in Dudley. I, I had a cold card, so I don't need to use any of my uh, wild cards here. I can just immediately build here. Very standard for uh, cotton play. Uh, basically profiting from the links that others have built for you uh, and building the call. Like typically the iron players, they build the link for you. Um, in the meantime, also uh, purple, very standard, took an extra loan and set it off uh, with, the, with the iron mine, fairly standard. You could also overbuild your level one iron, uh, but here in this case, he kind of has the space, so he's making use of it. Uh, and I don't remember, he probably also had the card for uh, Dudley. And uh, um, orange starts to, uh, did something similar, overbuilt his uh, level 1 iron with a level 2, fairly standard for, for brick players, and uh, then uh, built a beer. And uh, then the blue player has taken an extra loan and uh, partially offset it with a building here, a level 1 call. This is a bit less usual, typically you would, you would offset it with a level 2 call. Uh, you have always kind of an extra, if you're going cotton, you're spending basically 5 develops, so 2.5 develop actions on cotton, and then you have an extra half develop action that you can use typically typically for call but you can also do it for other um things and that's that's uh, what blue player is doing here um <clears throat> and uh next is my turn yeah i just took the loan and built in dudley and uh, i decide to uh immediately take the two important slots here um the birmingham one and the derby one and this is immediately where you, you start to feel the tension if you're um um if you're playing cotton, there's a limited amount of, of slots. These are the two good ones that are connected. Uh, I, I want to get them as early as possible and not give them away to the other player, um, especially the Birmingham one. The Derby one is a bit less crucial because there's another cotton spot, uh, but of course it could be taken away by someone building beer here. Um, I'm happy to leave the beer slot open so that if someone builds beer, I can maybe make use of it. You know, as a cotton place here, we will, we will need the beer and um, yeah, so uh, that's the play kind of for my side, uh, but I think the big thing is here that I'm able to get the Birmingham slot, uh, and this for Blue is, is really annoying because, um, yeah, he doesn't really have any good moves here. You could say somewhere building in Thamesworth and then connecting to Oxford and selling here, but uh, it's, it's so many canals, it's really not 
uh, efficient at all. So probably blue is constrained to play in, in Derby, and maybe in Balper, uh, the, his high his high level cotton, and then sell to Nottingham or something. Um, <clears throat> I spend a lot of money, which also means that next turn I will be lost. So I basically here, because I was lost in previous turn, now I'm, I'm, uh, I was able to not spend a lot of money, and now first I basically played four actions in a row. And, and this kind of becomes very important when you have two players going cotton, because you are you need to control the flow and control the, the actions. Um, this is the next turn, and as you see here, I'm, I'm not lost. The other players... Uh, Fairly standard. Oh no, actually, it gets quite interesting here, because uh, Blue and I are doing lots of develops. I think three to four develops. Uh, I think three develops from my side, and uh, I need to see his board. But I think he, he did maybe even four develops. Um, <clears throat> and um, the the issue for Blue is um, uh, so the two of us have driven up the price of iron to a very high level, and as a consequence, Purple has overbuilt um, Orange here. So we, we see a kind of the first overbuilds happening in this game. The level two from orange here was overbuilt by a level three from purple. And this is a big blow because this level two theoretically could be worth up to 10 points. It's five points in canal, then it gets scored again in rail and it doesn't get overbuilt. So it would have been 10 points and, and this overbuild takes this away. And uh, this is kind of key when two players go cotton, don't build iron. The iron players, uh, there should be only two of them and they should overbuild each other. Um, and kind of take away the, their potential in that sense. Uh, we see from Orange also building some extra iron, and uh, here it was kind of a tricky situation. Uh, Blue was explaining it in chat. He basically built in Stoke on Trent and then sold immediately to Nottingham to get a plus three bonus and uh, used up one of Orange gear. And uh, the issue for Blue was, and I don't think it's a, the right move that he did, but I understand where he's coming from. Uh, he said, well, yellow will be able to do four actions in a row. Because I'm lost, I, I can like take a loan and, and build some canal. For example, build a canal to Belper. And uh, then I can build in Belper, and I could have sold three cottons using this, this beer, this beer, and this beer. So th there was the danger for blue that I would go away with all the merchant beer, plus some of the beer on the board. And uh, he, he couldn't do anything because I have these four actions in a row. So um, he was very concerned, and this is where the tricky part, and the tension that is always present when two players go cotton. Um, so instead, he opted to uh, build in Stoke on Trent and sell immediately, getting the plus three points here, which is, is a nice one and one of the beers. Um, the issue a bit is that there's still uh, two actions, uh, seven and eight in Canal, and uh, as blue, it's kind of like you don't really have any good action left to do in Canal because you already sold. Uh, typically, you would sell on the, the last turn. Uh, the last uh, action of Canal is selling, and uh, these players, they, 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 all, they all know that. I think in our games, it, it, it pretty much always is everyone sells on the last turn of Canal in 99.9% .9 of all cases. Uh, but in this game, it's kind of a bit special, and uh, Blue decides to sell early. But you will see he actually doesn't really have any good moves thereafter. Um, I don't exactly know what cards he had in hand. In my view, he should maybe... Um, yeah, not, not Panic Cell, but maybe, um, I don't know if he had any beer cards, but he could have gotten some of his own beer out. Like one or two beer yourself, plus um, plus a level three cotton. I mean, he could have still connected here. So if he got one beer himself out and then connected to this one, he could have sold uh, two level three cottons with one level two beer, and he would still be in the game in my view. Um, I don't think there was this rush to absolutely sell because now he, it just is a bit out of good actions for the rest of um, Canal. Um, and so uh, the game continues. Uh, from my side, I, I developed um, a fourth time and uh, built two level two beers. So um, I'm kind of covered from a beer perspective. Uh, and uh, this has a side consequence that we're driving up the price of iron. Now this might seem bad because I'm consuming a lot of iron. So why would I want to have a high iron price? But uh, there's only two people going iron. And with two people going iron and, and so much iron going off the board, it inevitably leads to overbuilds. So we saw already one overbuild, a purple being uh, overbuilding orange. And uh, you will see that there's going to be much more overbuilds this game. It's absolutely insane. Um, yeah. And uh, I'm not going over all the details of the card management. Of course, you, you need to manage your cards really well. Uh, it's kind of one of the main parts of this game. Um, <clears throat> so this is. Um, yeah, turn eight uh, is happening, so the last turn of Canal, and, and this happens in, in 
we, we see here that basically blue what did blue do any uh i don't exactly remember what blue actually did uh i think he oh he overbuilt his own call with another call took some extra loans and i think he did some develop as well um so he developed uh, some beer away i think uh so level one beer away so that he could access to the level two beer so we see from blue side that the, the last two turns from canal were not particularly interesting uh but of course he he built up some extra cash i guess that's yeah that that's the, the main thing um, um i'm not sure what else he could have really done um you know building a canal here for three points is really not so valuable you don't want to do that um plus you might be opening up well for someone else to use so you don't want to do that um then uh from purple side i think purple here made maybe one or two mistakes um oh, oh yeah what happened is that orange overbuilt purple in derby so in derby a level two uh from orange was first overbuilt by purple and now a level three from purple got overbuilt by orange so this is actually absolutely massive uh, this means they're both down uh five to seven points in canal potentially more from rail so they're like easily down 10 points uh across the whole game because of these overbuilds happening now to be fair they got good prices for the iron and maybe this compensates a little bit but still um this shows what happens if only two pe people go iron if two people go iron you will see you will see these kind of overbuilds all the time um <clears throat> but from purple side uh, what happens is he only got one beer out this one here uh, i'm not entirely sure didn't have a burden on trend card didn't have a stafford card um didn't have a utux cedar card uh it's a bit odd uh in typical build like this you would want to get your two level two crates out and um and two level two beers uh the beers are really the strength the crates the level two crates i think they're slightly overrated um i think i've said this before i don't think they're, they're not that strong they get, they cost more than a beer and they give only one income the beer gives five income so typically in reality more like two three income so the beer is, is basically the strong part of the, the brick build, not the, the crates. In any case, he ends up building uh, two crates and then uh, selling here to Warrington. And um, yeah, uh, and with only this. So uh, at this stage, I think um, purple is behind compared to the rest, partially due to the overbuilds, partially due to, uh, I think he, um, yeah, I could have maybe played slightly better. I, I don't know exactly what his cards were, so take this with a, a pinch of salt. Um, um, yeah, then from my side, loan and sell. By the way, typical last game of last uh, turn of Canal is always loan and sell in, I'd say, 90% of the cases. Sometimes something else and sell, but often it's loan and sell. Um, and then we see also from Orange, um, he got, I mean, lots of his irons out, level four to level three. This is quite good. One of his beer flipped. The links are fairly valuable-ish. Yeah, they're, they're decent-ish. And then he still has uh, one um, beer. You could think of keeping it for the next stage and um, and kind of uh, give yourself a double rail of it. But he's fairly lo lost in turn order, so I don't, uh, I, I guess he, I don't remember exactly. I think he ends up building in Birmingham and then selling using the beer. I guess that's probably what I would do. Uh, and uh, no, I'm wrong. He actually builds extra beer. Okay, to, to set him up for the next stage for extra beer. I think that's acceptable as well. And uh, to Cologne. Yeah. So this is kind of the first turn of rail. And it's kind of a good moment to pause and see who's ahead, who's behind, uh, how is it going. Um, now, strictly, strictly speaking, in victory points, I have here the most, but you have to see these are two buildings that will be flipped uh, very soon. Um, and. Um, I mean, I count them already in the score. So basically, Orange has uh, 12 more points and is actually leading with 69 points. Um, and we see the blue is actually behind. Uh, the cash is, I'd say, fairly similar. I have a bit more income, a bit less cash, but I think it roughly compensates. So everyone goes into, into rail with, let's say, 30 to 70 cash. You really want to go into rail with enough money that you can do at least one double rail if beer pops up or if you have a beer card yourself. Um, that, that's my opinion so uh, you, you always kind of want to have 30 cash at least um so um if you look at the score i'd say orange has more points uh, at the moment uh, economy is pretty similar and um i'm probably second so i'm, I'm say or it's between orange and me at the moment i think blue you really see why i was not too keen on, on his actions or why i feel they were not so so strong 
um, like 47 points is, is not good enough, even if you have some cash to compensate. It's kind of at the lower limit than you see it compared to the other players. I think he was a bit too afraid of losing the, the merchant beer and it kind of sold too early, to be honest. Um, but good. Um, Orange, and, and this is maybe one point where I'm not really sure. I, I think he could have built a level 2 crate in Birmingham and sold, and then he would be. He would have had more points. Instead, he brings out extra beer. And uh, this allows other players to double rail of this beer. You know, if you, if you have your own beer left and you can double rail of your own beer, I, I'm not against it. I think it's quite quite okay. But if you leave beer for others, then others can double rail. And uh, yeah, it, it ends up like this. Uh, purple immediately uh, double rail. So a single rail here and then a double rail. This is a valuable link, right? This is seven points. Uh, from my side, I end up building beer in Burton on Trent and then also double railing of it. Uh, this is the most valuable link on the map. Actually, you know, it's only seven points. It typically is more, <laughs> that's why I'm saying that. Um, but typically this around Utok Cedar and, and this beer country here, that, that's where the most valuable links are. And then depending on the game around Birmingham can also get quite valuable. Uh, yeah, and um, so that's what I end up doing. This will give one beer to blue, so blue will be able to double rail. This is pretty much inevitable. Like in, in an ideal world, you're able to do like quad rails, but in, in practice, it's just, um, yeah, in early rail, everyone is just fighting for the most valuable links. And uh, yeah, I, I guess um, the fact that um, orange left beer is maybe not too bad because purple was able to consume it and purple was, I think, a little bit behind. So maybe orange doesn't feel too bad about leaving beer for purple. He would have feel bad to leave beer to me though. Uh, yeah. We see again that the price of iron is uh, calls to maximum. Uh, the blue player was going cotton just like myself has not built a single iron, and in fact it's kind of locked because you need to develop this away. And uh, same for me. So we're basically keep on driving up the price of iron and hopefully the, the, the brick players overbuild each other. Um, uh, so in, in my view, uh, purple here has this level four and my idea is that purple should overbuild orange here uh, and take away the seven points. That's that's the ideal scenario. All he needs is an iron card or a stone train card. It's not too rare. Um, yeah, you see immediately how fast you burn through cash in uh, in, in early rail. Um, but yeah, that's how it is. <clears throat> so now we're in the second turn of rail, and we continue. And uh, a couple of actions uh, have happened here. Um, basically, Blue used uh, my beard to double rail in the north, and uh, then decided to build level four cotton. In my view, this is uh, a mistake. You don't want to build your level 4 cotton that early. You want to first fight a bit for the valuable links and kind of spread yourself out and get access and maybe also get some coal out. Uh, the level 2 coal, it only gives 2 points, so it's not that strong point-wise, but it gives 10-15 uh, cash depending on the price and it gives you another um, 7 on the income step, which if you're here it's more like 3 to 4 income, so it's actually not too bad if you get it in early rail. In early rail, like a uh, level 2 coal is quite strong. Of course, in the last turn of rail, a level two call is, is only two points and really not so valuable. But in my view here, blue should build a coal mine actually, instead of a, a level four um, cotton. I guess his fear was uh, we, we were both fighting for the spots and some of these spots are dual use so they can very quickly go away to coal or to crate. Uh, only these three on the bottom are for sure cotton, uh, but uh, if he doesn't have the cards or if he has no access to it, which kind of looks like it at the moment, um, He's not guaranteed these spots, so he's kind of rushed to occupy these spots physically. But in my view, this kind of weakens his economy, and it's not necessary. I would, if I were him, I would have, I don't know, maybe connected to Birmingham, or I mean, I haven't thought in detail about it, or connected to Nuneaton and get some extra uh, call out. Um, we, also, we also see Orange do something peculiar here. Uh, Orange is basically immediately occupying this farm brewery. Um, I think farm breweries, you should kind of aim for it. But not on turn one, maybe towards turn three ish or so. Turn, well, maybe two, three. Um, they, they're interesting, they're, they're good, it guarantees you beer basically. Um, but um, there are sometimes more valuable links and more valuable actions. Uh, around Birmingham is potentially more valuable. Um, yeah. Um, his idea probably is that if an iron gets built in Colebrookdale, which often happens, uh, these are quite valuable links around Colebrookdale. They show like six points. 
and here probably one of the two cotton players will build, or the two will build, and then he has it. So this would also be a valuable link and he has access to the brewery. So potentially these are three valuable links, but of course it's potential, it's not guaranteed yet. By some of the links up north, they're pretty much guaranteed seven, six, seven points at least. Um, <clears throat> so this is what Orange did. Uh, from my side, um, I ended up uh, building in Canuck, a coal mine and building a rail. And I think, yeah, this is the right point. It's like late, uh, sorry, it's like um, early-ish, Rail, so you want to first fight, fight for the good uh, rails, second you, you want to spread a bit out and get access, and third you want to get some uh, coal out so that your economy uh, recovers. As you see my income now is 11. I think once you're at 11 um, it's fine, you don't need to too much more uh, because it gets very inefficient here on the income track to get higher than uh, there. Right, so here it's two two steps uh, for one income and here it gets three. I think once you get to that stage don't, don't, over, don't worry too much, don't value this too much anymore. Uh, but for me, I have two uh, level two calls out, plus I have some beer out, and, and this boosts my income to a good level. Uh, yeah, I think it's similar with Orange. Uh, Orange has now uh, level two out, a couple of beers out, income is 11, that's probably where you want it to be. But there you see with Blue, it's a bit on the low side, uh, in my opinion. I, I think it would have been better to build a call. Uh, but that's of course the, the nuances of uh, two players going cotton, there's this permanent tension for for the spots. Um, yeah, uh, so it, it continues from there. And uh, maybe a brief pause to see uh, who's winning, where do we stand. Uh, so we see Blue actually took loan and built in Thamesworth again. Um, yeah, so really f prioritizing getting the good spots for the cotton and potentially also selling uh, to, to, to get the beer, right? Because I, I have no cotton out yet, so I won't be able to contest these merchant beers. Um, um, uh, I, I think the weakness is for Blue, he has no access to a beer spot. He cannot overbuild one of his own beers, like I could, or he doesn't can, cannot use a farm brewery. So he's not really guaranteed uh, to sell with his own beer. He has to use the merchant beer, so he's kind of quite nervous about that. Uh, we see also the iron prices, it's just at maximum, it's just staying there. Orange cannot build iron, has already got all his iron out, and I'm just thinking, I mean, purple needs to overbuild orange. And if purple overbuilds orange, I probably win the game because I'm, I feel like he's my closest competitor at this stage. But let's look a bit at the victory points. Um, so I have 84, okay, cash and income. Uh, orange has 77, but he can flip this one whenever he wants with a double rail. Um, so I'd say it's probably fairly close, uh, fairly even in points, uh, and both in cash and income as well. But of course, with cotton, at, in the second part of rail, you have very strong actions, namely building your cotton. While as a brick player, you kind of tend to fall off. There's not so many good actions left at the se second part of rail. You're building some rails for four or five points, maybe some coal, but same, it's not that many points. So uh, I feel like I'm in a good spot here. Uh, we see um, purple also with 85 points, so also quite high. Uh, okay, cash and okay income. So this, this looks um, decent, actually. I, I think he was slightly behind. I felt at, at the end of canal, but he was able to get uh, the double rails off. And um, yeah, it seems like he's still very much uh, in, in the game. And then we have blue uh, of 56 points, but you have to add here 24 points that he can get by selling. Uh, plus he can get bonus points here. So um, blue more has around 80-ish points. So he's really not far behind, but his economy is clearly much weaker. And as I said, I would have preferred waiting one or two more turns to, to get out the level for uh, cotton. I, I guess he was very worried about the beer, but just built one extra rail and one extra coal mine, maybe two extra coal mines, and then he could have done it, in my view. Um, so uh, from my side here, I end up uh, building extra uh, uh, connections to get more space. Um, because I feel like it was still a bit too early to get my cotton out. I'm not too worried. I have the farm brewery, I can just build two cottons, maybe three, and then build on the farm brewery and sell. So I, that's my part for this, that's my plan for the second part of rail. Um, and uh, I built to Dudley so that I get access to Kidderminster if I want to build there. Um, and uh, Belper because I might want to build a pottery here. Although I think this ends up backfiring a bit, to be honest. Uh, but yeah. Um, and looking at my cards, there's a couple of points. I have an iron card and I have a Dudley card, so I can overbuild here. 
I have also some giant cards I could eventually overbuild here. Um, if I just develop my level 1 and 2 uh, iron away, I can build a level 3. But this only nets me 7 points in 2 actions, which is 3.5 points per action. That's not good enough, I'm not happy with that. Um, but... Um, Oh, now I remember. I think I used up the orange beer. No, no sorry, I'm side to remark. I think I end up using the orange beer that he had left here. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, basically, the, if I develop my iron, um, I can overbuild a level two, and then afterwards I could maybe even overbuild a level three of someone else. Or, but I could at minimum get my level, uh, I, I could get my level three, and my level four out, which would still be 16 points in three actions, which is still quite good and quite decent. And it's especially the overbuilds that make it really strong. Um, yeah, um, so we, we kind of continue uh, in the fourth round of rail. I'm, I'm lost and uh, have a look at some of the developments. So here, um, Blue ends up um, building in Belper a coal mine, boosting his economy. Also, I think he also took a loan in between uh, to kind of get a good amount of cash, but of course, his income is still zero. And he also uh, is preparing to sell, so it connects to uh, Nottingham uh, with a rail. Um, and uh, purple builds some extra links, and, and again, right, this is a typical break where, you know, you, you kind of run out of steam, you don't have any very strong actions left. Uh, you could potentially develop the level 3 and the level 4 crates away, then build a level 5 crate, build some beer and sell. Uh, but the issue for purple is, because he didn't get the level 2 beer out, the, the second one in Canal, he cannot really build anywhere uh, beer. Uh, he would need to overbuild his own beer, but this is the same level, so... Um, purple basically doesn't have any good actions left. He can just build rails, uh, maybe the level 1 pottery, um, some coal, and that's it. But with rails and coal, you're scoring maybe 4 points per turn or, uh, per action, so, so it's not enough to, to really win. And so kind of slowly purple is falling away as a, as a contender uh, in this game. You know, building lots of rails and, and they're somewhat valuable, but they're not like valuable enough. Uh, what I don't understand is why Purple did not build his level 4 iron. I've been waiting for like 3 turns for, for him to overbuild Orange and he didn't do it. Maybe he thought Orange is not winning anyway, I'm just helping the others by doing it. Maybe he didn't have the right card. I'm not really sure, but th this is worth 9 points. I don't, I'm not sure, maybe he had something in mind or he was missing the card. Can happen. Um, and Orange built uh, here in pottery, in commentary, uh, pottery 1. And, and his idea is basically build the level 1 pottery, build and maybe the level uh, 5 crate, so he developed this away. And then with the farm brewery plus merchant beer, sell everything. This is, uh, yeah, it can be quite strong, especially if you're able to surround the location of your level 5 crate, so you really profit from the extra link value. Typically, like, you could build here in Wolverhampton and then get some links around it. Uh, I mean, the, the real big prizes to do this in Birmingham, of course. There's so many connection points around Birmingham. If, you, if you're able to surround Birmingham, then uh, this industry, which yields eight points, can easily become like 13 points or so, uh, just because of the extra connection points. <clears throat> so that's kind of what Orange is aiming for. So the, the strategy for Orange is quite clear. No need to bring out extra coal. His income is good enough. I mean, maybe, maybe one extra coal or so, uh, but not really much more is needed. Um, and um, yeah, and then blue will probably sell, as I said. And from my side, it's kind of uh, getting to a point where I want to get my iron out and I want to start building my um, uh, my uh, cottons, right? So I have one, two, three, four, five links. I say four to five links is enough as a cotton player in rail. That's kind of what you want to aim. Enough to contest some of the good value links, enough to kind of get some access to the board, uh, but uh, not enough. I mean. You don't want to do more because you have better things to do in the second part of rail. Um, so I think I end up developing here. Yeah, I end up developing my iron and overbuilding purple. Uh, the reason is I just couldn't overbuild orange, even though I think orange is a bigger threat. Um, I'm thinking of I'll maybe overbuild orange later uh, with uh, oh with my stock on trend card that I threw away. Okay, so I, I kind of misplayed here. I threw away my stock on trend card that I had. Let me just check back. Yeah, I had my stock on trend card. And I threw it away. Um, not really sure why. Maybe I thought, hmm, maybe it's a mistake to be honest. Uh, or maybe I thought I will never be able to overbuild orange. Never mind, throw away this card. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So I, I overbuilt here. Um, 
uh, purple and basically purple was still has a good score and like has now really fallen away uh, this is uh, five points that he's down because of the overbuild plus as I said he's running out of good actions he's just gonna be building some links and a bit of coal for the rest of the game uh, in, the, in the second part of rail and this is not gonna be enough to win uh, compared to orange compared to myself yeah um, so blue sees that I'm still not building um, so he's kind of uh, not selling yet Instead, opts to build in Belper uh, level one pottery it's an excellent move connects also to Birmingham of course if he could connect to Dudley as well he can then get the plus four from here the plus three from here and it starts to look quite reasonable uh, yeah I did at the time some kind of intermediary calculation you see it here on the right um, I'm roughly at 108 points and I don't know how I computed this uh, I guess I just gave myself uh, an extra 10 points or so because I have I'm like I have played two less actions than the others uh, orange is around 110 points purple around 104 and blue around 110 ish as well but has very low income and so we slowly start seeing I'm, I'm, I'm pulling ahead because I still have cash I have good income and my best actions are still to come I'm still gonna build uh, my level 4 iron I'm still gonna build my high level uh, cotton I'm still gonna get my beer out and sell so my, my second part of rail will be very strong and uh, for them um, for blue once he sells he's just gonna build some rails and a bit of cotton uh, a bit of coal and he, anyway he doesn't have that much cash so blue is, uh, is falling behind and um, same with purple with overbuild uh, yeah and, and basically these two players right the two brick players because of all the overbuilds that have been happening uh, they've just really started falling behind. They, they would otherwise be like 5-10 points more than what they currently have. I mean, purple even more. They would be more like around 100, 120 at this stage and uh, I would have to catch up 10 points to them. Uh, but because of the overbuilds, we're actually in a fairly even game here. Uh, so from my side, I end up uh, building in Valsal, my, my level 4 iron. And I don't know what else I did. Uh, did I take a loan? I guess I took a loan here. Um, yeah, and I see also that in the meantime, Purple also overbuilt my uh, coal mine. So a lot of overbuilds happening. I, I think we, I've lost count of it. I think it's the fourth or the fifth overbuild that happened this game. Of course, getting your coal overbuilt is not such a big deal. It's only two points, but still, um, often the games end up with everyone around 150, 155 points. So two points is, is, uh, is two points. <laughs> um, so uh, here we're in the sixth round of rail, um, yeah, and uh, we see now that Orange is building a lot of connections towards Birmingham. So we know what's going to come. He's going to build the level five, great, and, and then get a lot of connection points out of it and sell. Uh, and uh, from my side, I uh, get my level three um, cotton out in Belper while I still can. I get the level one, sorry, the level three cotton and the level one pottery here out. Uh, my idea is to get also still uh, one more. Um, uh, cotton out, typically in Kidderminster, I mean, that's my, my goal. Um, and then I have the beer that can build here, and then I can sell with this card and the coal I could still use to uh, build a coal mine or overbuild my own coal mine to get a bit of extra cash, uh, or maybe take a loan. Although probably overbuild my own coal mine is better, it yields me one point. Um, so that's the plan for me, um, and uh, I'm spending here a lot of money, which means that I will be uh, basically in the seventh rounds I will be lost which I can manipulate turn order such that in the eighth round I'm first and I'm guaranteed to pretty much do my thing I mean this this idea of controlling to, to play, play four actions in a row is quite strong so you want to kind of have rounds where you spend a lot followed by rounds where you don't spend a lot so you can uh, kind of control the pace uh, especially in games with, with kind of people fighting for the same slots and, and the same gear uh, what I find a bit odd, but it's like the fact that no one played New Worcester, uh, even though we're so um, so pressed to, to, to build um, cotton. And maybe this shows that building spots for cotton are not so much a limiting factor. Um, it's, I think, more the merchant beers, actually. Um, but yeah. Uh, so let's proceed here. Uh, this is then the seventh round of rail. Uh, what happened in the meantime? Uh, Blue sold everything. Uh, using uh, the, uh, the merchant beer here, the merchant beer here, uh, and gets a re uh, I mean a decent 121 points, but it's just like not enough uh, because the next actions he will just be building some rails and there's no good rails left, like 
really what, what rails are left there's one rail from Worcester to Birmingham that's four points and a couple in the north that are worth three points this is it's garbage um, so um, for blue this is, this is like just not enough and uh, he still gets an iron out by the way I think he develops and built an iron but this is like not so strong actually because you you develop and then you build so this is three and a half points across two actions uh, so it's seven points in total and you don't overbuild any one or so so I, I don't I don't think this is that strong I guess he was just running out of actions and that's what I say like don't build your cotton too early you have time build first some rails get some coal out maybe iron and then once once uh, you're in the fifth round of rail that's where you start to get out your cotton <clears throat> that's 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 I think how it should be played uh, but I mean it's easier said than done if he I mean he, he was very pressed for the beer because he uh, he developed the way his level one beers but there was no spot anymore to build a uh, beer and he couldn't overbuild any of his own beer so yeah some of the the choices he made in canal also kind of spilling over into rail um, uh, we see from purple um, building lots of extra rails and building coals because that's all there is really to do uh, I guess he will still get out his lost iron because that's still nine points are very valuable um, and uh, Orange uh, did finally uh, belt here, and uh, yeah, his, his plan is clear. Um, now, uh, I think Purple left some free call on the board, probably. Uh, oh, he didn't have access to Birmingham. <sighs> Maybe a mistake as well. Uh, I feel like getting access to Birmingham is valuable because it gives you so many options and flexibility afterwards. So like, um, But okay, he didn't have access, so he built in Redditch and it connects to Birmingham. Uh, this gives me actually some free call for myself, which is convenient, uh, so I can build an extra rail. I think originally I had not planned to build this rail. I had planned to wait for uh, Orange to build this rail for me. Uh, but it's still six points, quite decent. And with the free call, I'll, I'll take it. And uh, you see here what I mean with the turn order manipulation. So I spent a lot previous turn, which means now I'm lost. And now I can just very carefully spend less than what the others spent to guarantee that I will go first in the last uh, age. So that kind of nothing screws my plan. No one steals my spot or steals my beer. Or, or anything like that. Uh, so I built a beer, I built a rail here, and uh, then I end by building in Kidderminster uh, the cotton and selling using the beer uh, here plus my own beer. And this leads us to the end. I think it just ends with everyone. Uh, I think blue builds two more rails in north, or uh, uh, purple builds level four iron and a rail here, and orange uh, sells. And this leads us to the end with the end score. And uh, as you see, even though two players went cotton, uh, I, I kind of managed to win this one. Uh, of course, there were many, many overbelts, uh, especially for orange and purple. Uh, I think orange lost something like 10-ish points, right? Because his level two got overbuilt in Canal. So he would have been more at around 154 points. Um, and uh, purple lost a stupid amount of points. Uh, I think he would have been at 160 or something like that if, if there had been no overbelts. Um, <clears throat> So uh, for sure an interesting way to play, uh, let, let the other guys overbuild each other with iron in rail area. You can join the party and overbuild them as well and keep them in check that way. Uh, and in the meantime, two players going cotton. If the merchant setup is right, then you also go beer. Um, I think it's playable, I think it's doable. And uh, yeah, that's kind of a, an interesting game, I think. Um, yeah, so let me know in the comments what you think of it. Two players going cotton. I'm going to try it out more. I'm not yet 100% sold myself on this ID. Uh, I want to see it a bit more in action. Um, uh, but yeah, that, that's the game for today. Uh, have a good day, everyone. Bye. Salute. Out.